Oh my god. I'm catching you, Alex. Put you on mute and no video. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like, <laughs> like in my bed. <laughs> I think that was flashed for a little bit. Hi, everyone. If you're just joining us, it is 8.47 p.m. Eastern Time. This is the O4UB 2018 Resume Writing Webinar. We are going to get started at 9 p.m. Thanks for joining.
Hey there, everyone. This is Jake Miner, Admissions Director for O4UB 2018. This is the 2018 Resume Writing Webinar. It is 8.50 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to get started in about 10 minutes. Thanks for logging in.
Hello, everyone. This is Jake Miner, Admissions Director for O4UB. The time is 8.56 p.m., and we are going to begin our 2018 resume writing webinar at 9 p.m. We're just going to wait for a few more folks to join. Thanks for logging in tonight. Hi folks, this is Jake Miner, Admissions Director for Out for Undergrad Business 2018. We are going to go ahead and get started in a few moments uh, for our 2018 resume writing webinar, but just to make sure that everybody can hear me, uh, if somebody wouldn't mind just messaging back in the live chat quickly to say hello, uh, that way we'll know our audio is all set to go. Uh, if you're following along at home, we will be using the live chat at the end of the presentation for our Q&A portion.
All right, folks, we are going to go ahead and get started. So for those of you who are just joining us, good evening or good afternoon, depending on where you are in the country today. Uh, my name is Jake Miner. I am one of your admissions directors for Out for Undergrad Business 2018. And I'm joined tonight on this call by my two co-admissions directors, Sabrina Jean-Baptiste and Alex Semyon. Uh, we'll all introduce ourselves in a moment. Uh, but once again, this is the 2018 resume writing webinar. And I just wanted to start off by saying once again, congratulations to all of you. We are very excited to have you joining us this year at the conference. We are less than two months away from what is sure to be a really meaningful weekend of learning and engaging and getting to know each other a little bit better. And the point of this workshop is to position you in the best way possible to have a successful weekend when it comes to networking and conversing with our sponsors and each other about your experiences and future opportunities that you're looking for. So by way of introduction, as I said, my name is Jake Miner. I am very proud to say that this is the fourth year that I'm involved in O4UB. Uh, some of you might know me from last year, I was our programming director. My pronouns uh, are he, him, his. I went to the University of Pennsylvania where I studied Middle Eastern studies and marketing and operations management. And after three years at BCG, the Boston Consulting Group, I am just beginning a leave of absence to attend business school at Harvard Business School this coming fall. So really excited about that. I am going to turn it over to Alex to introduce himself now. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining the call. My name is Alex Semyon, and I am a consulting senior analyst at Accenture. Prior to Accenture, I was at Duke University, where I studied public policy and psychology, and I am one of your admissions directors. Thanks, Alex. I'm Jean Baptiste. I'm currently an associate at Goldman Sachs, where I've been for about five years now. I will and graduated with a degree in psychology. And I'm just really excited to see you guys all at the conference in about a month now. Thank you, Sabrina and Alex. So throughout the call, the three of us will be uh, all chiming in at various points. I will lead us through the presentation. And throughout this presentation, uh, we are very tech savvy here at O4U and very happy to be on uh, YouTube Live. Uh, so if you have questions as they arise uh, throughout the presentation, feel free to type them into the live chat. And during the Q&A section at the end, we will review all of them and make sure that we cover uh, anything that is on your mind. This presentation will also be available uh, at the end of our broadcast to view again, and we will share the materials. Uh, so no need to take copious notes. We promise to share everything. Before we get started, uh, just wanted to share a quick reminder uh, for everybody here about uh, what O4U is all about and how uh, O4U business uh, fits into uh, the broader O4U family and what our mission is. So at O4U, we believe that the work that we do changes lives. Our mission is to help high achieving LGBTQIA plus undergrads reach their full potential. And this year we are proud to be serving at least 700 students. We achieve this mission primarily through our four conferences. So uh, most of you on this call tonight will be attending the O4U Business Conference, which is uh, in September in New York City, hosted by Goldman Sachs. Uh, but we also have three other conferences as part of our umbrella organization, O4U Tech, O4U Engineering, and O4U Marketing. While some of the content covered at each of these uh, conferences will be different depending on their industry of focus, uh, at the end of the day, we have the same core mission, which is about advancing high achieving LGBTQ plus undergrads uh, to reach their highest potential. And we're really excited to have you all be a part of that mission this year. Uh, the content of this specific resume writing webinar will be very much so geared toward uh, resume writing for careers in business, specifically for careers 
in financial services, management and strategy consulting, and professional services, including audit, accounting, tax, and advisory. So a heads up, if you are not attending O4U Business, that is very much so the, the focus of today's presentation. A few objectives uh, for us to cover today, and you can think of this as our agenda for this call, uh, we'll be covering a whole slew of things having to do with your resume. So we'll begin with understanding the purpose of a resume and why, uh, why it's important to have one and have one that is uh, presents you in the best light possible. Uh, we will then move on to discussing structure and format uh, before deep diving into content, how to actually use up the space on the page, and then spending a bulk of time on writing style, which is the trickiest part of the art of resume writing before leaving you with a few finishing tips. Uh, before we completely dive into this, uh, what I wanted to share is if you take nothing out of uh, this workshop. There are three words that I want you to keep in the back of your head whenever you think about writing or updating your resume. And that is clarity, relevancy, and impact. We'll be going through each of those three points throughout this presentation, but your resume should always be as clear as possible in delivering the message or narrative that you're trying to share. It should be relevant in the experiences that you write about and that you present to potential future employers. And it should share the impact that you personally delivered in your time and your past experiences and how you can translate that impact into the next opportunity that you are about to pursue. And as always, if you have any questions throughout this presentation, please feel free to share them in the live chat window. We will answer them following the main presentation. So let's dive right in. The first point that we're going to cover is the purpose of a resume. So we all have resumes. Uh, all of you have already submitted one, if not two different versions of your resume already. And we have to say as the admissions team that we were very, very impressed by your submissions. Uh, the point of this workshop very much so is to provide a refresher rather than a complete uh, overhaul of your resumes that is very much so not needed. Uh, but wanted to make sure that everybody kind of had the basics at hand. When we think about a resume, resumes are an incredibly important tool in showcasing who you are to potential employers. Employers use your resumes to screen applicants quickly and determine who should move forward into interview rounds. There are also really great ways to understand different things that your potential employer could ask you about in interviews. Oftentimes statements on your resume are going to come up uh, in questions that are asked by the people you'll speak with, uh, because at the end of the day, interviews are about getting to know a little bit more about you. At the end of the day, this is about learning who you are, what your skills are, what your qualifications are, and for you to share some of your achievements. Uh, because of this, it is incredibly important that your resume be as clear as possible in the delivery of your messages. In order to be as clear as possible, we highly recommend that you spend a bit of time really paying attention to the structure and format of your resume. Before even thinking about the words on the page or how you describe what you've done, uh, just the presentation on the page is kind of the first glimpse at who you are as a potential candidate. Uh, in the business community, the length that we are looking for is one page. All of our employers who are going to talk to you are typically looking for that one page resume that covers all of the relevant experiences that you have to share. Now, while I'm on the topic of the length of your resume and you see this lovely little illustration on the right hand side of your screen uh, for a potential ordering of the different sections you could have and kind of what a clean copy might look like, uh, this is a really good time to talk about design itself. In the business community, 
the design of your resume should be structured in such a way that it can be easily skimmed. You want a recruiter or a member of a firm that you are interested in joining to be able to look at your resume, not have to encounter any clutter on the page and see where has this person worked in the past? What have they done in those positions? And why might they be a good fit at our firm? So our recommendation is to keep additional formatting to a minimum. In general, keep it very simple, white page, black text, professional fonts like Times New Roman, Arial Helvetica, uh, and try to avoid large color blocking uh, or intricate design work. Now, that's not to say that designs aren't lovely to have on a resume. However, in professional services, management and strategy consulting, financial services, in general, the rule is keep it as simple as possible. If you are looking longer term for careers in the creative world and marketing, graphic design, things like that, the resume is a really great way to show some of that skill and creativity on the page. But for business, the interest is certainly going to be more on what is spoken about on the page rather than what the design on the page is. Keep it simple, keep it clear, keep it easy to read. Another point that I'll uh, highlight on this page is you'll see we have written on here that objectives should not be a category. A few folks at the top of their resume sometimes choose to include an objective or an overall summary. In general, uh, the business community is moving away from this practice as the, the point of the one pager is that it speaks for itself. It should tell your story without needing to summarize it right at the top. It's a bit of an outdated custom. Uh, but what I will say, and this is a rule across this entire webinar, is that resume writing is an art, not a science. So there's no one perfect formula for writing the perfect resume. This is our recommendation for the best way to structure based on best practice uh, examples that we've seen, uh, which is why we share this recommendation now on uh, not including objectives as a category. And now we're gonna dive into resume content. So starting with the basics, right at the top of the page is contact information. This is pretty straightforward, but right at the top, loud and proud should be your name. You wanna make sure that it is immediately clear who the resume belongs to. It might seem silly to say this up front, but we have seen resumes before that do not have a name of the candidate on the page. So make sure that you have your name on the page and a way for recruiters and firms to reach you. Uh, share your phone number and email address. And our very, very strong advice is please make sure that the email address that you use on top of your resume is a professional one first name, last name, first initial, last name, whatever you feel is comfortable and professional, keep that on top of the page. I certainly, when I started looking for uh, jobs, got rid of my childhood AOL Instant Messenger email address. I uh, highly recommend you do the same. Um, sometimes people ask if it's better to include permanent address or a school address on the page. Feel free to include either uh, or both. My resume when I was in university had both on it. Uh, but the important thing here is that you wanna make sure that it's very clear who the resume belongs to, whose story the recruiter or firm is about to hear on the page. And if they wanna learn more, how they can reach you. Moving on forward to education. So right at the top of the page, we recommend putting a little bit about uh, your education background, especially since you are all uh, undergraduate students at really impressive schools who are doing some really great things. We want you to be very proud and upfront about your accomplishments and sharing what kind of educational background that you have. So we recommend that you certainly be sure to include your uni university name, and the location of your university. So we've got a, a sample here for the not so real California University in San Francisco, California. Uh, and we also want to make sure that you share the degree program you are enrolled in, as well as your intended or declared major, double major, minor, dual degree, what have you on that page. Uh, a really interesting point to make here is 
please be sure not to use abbreviations in the education section of your resume or throughout the uh, resume, actually, uh, especially if they're not super common abbreviations. I'll share a story from my, my own resume. I studied a major at Penn called Marketing and Operations Management. It was a joint concentration uh, that was abbreviated at school as MAOM. So anyone who went to Penn knew what MAOM stood for. But if I put that on my resume and share that with potential employers, very few of them would know what that actually means. So while it might seem natural for you to include an abbreviation, it's always safest to spell things out on the page just so it's super clear what you are working on. Also use this section to highlight any honors programs that you were a part of, any major honors having to do with the university uh, that you were enrolled in. Uh, most of our employers are also looking for your GPA. Please be sure to include the scale on which your GPA is placed on the page, especially if it's not out of 4.0. And another call out, and it's not on this page, but a few industries look for this. Uh, some folks will ask for your SAT or ACT scores as well. Uh, in management consulting, I know that's a pretty commonplace practice. You'll know from firm to firm when it comes time for uh, submitting applications during actual application season, but just be aware that some folks do ask for that. Another thing I will point out before I move on here is a few people ask whether or not they should continue to include their high school on their education section. And it's a great question. Uh, in general, our recommendation is uh, not to include your high school on the education section, mostly because recruiters are most interested in what you are doing now and most recently when it comes to your higher education. Uh, but if you want to have a single line on there about your high school, uh, nobody will think the lesser of it. So the decision is yours, like I said, art, not a science, but the recommendation that we typically share is just keep it to your university and really focus on what you're working now. After the education section, you will in typically encounter a section on work experience. Uh, and this is where you can really highlight uh, the employment that you have had in the past. Our kind of big thing that we wanna land on this page is the first word I shared was clarity. The second word that I shared was uh, relevancy. Is this relevant? Make sure that you tailor your work experiences on your resume for each job that you are applying to. You only want to include the most relevant experiences, especially since we said that we keep our resumes to one page maximum. We want to make sure that our resume doesn't read as an extensive and exhaustive list of every single job we've ever held, but rather details the experiences that are best highlighted in order to position us and tell our story best for the companies that we are applying for. Please make sure that when you are writing about your past experiences that you list the company name, your title at the company at the time, and a group if you are part of a specific team. So for example, you'll see in the illustration up above, the company's name was Fairbanks Consulting LLC, the title of the individual was Summer Consulting Analyst, and the group that they were working in was Financial Strategy. It's also very helpful to include location there. So Los Angeles, California is written on top all the way to the right of Fairbanks Consulting. And you want to always include your employment dates. Uh, use month ranges. So you can say October 2016 to present, for example. Uh, if you are writing about your current summer experiences, feel, please feel free to write June 2018 to present, or if you finished it, June 2018 to August 2018, et cetera. Uh, kind of in keeping with the education point that we raised on that uh, last page, in general, we recommend that you leave high school positions off unless you are a first year student. However, if there are notable employment experiences that have either continued from before you started university into your time at university, or are really relevant from perhaps the end of your time in high school that you would like to share because they are relevant, please feel free to do so. Uh, 
Another thing that I do want to highlight on this page is please make sure that you write your resume in reverse chronological order, which means that at the top of the work experience section have the most recent employment that you've had. So if you had a summer internship or position uh, this past summer, please put that at the top and work backwards from there. Another question that frequently comes up uh, is sometimes folks will have an extracurricular activity uh, or leadership experience at their university that also doubles as a work experience. So for example, many universities have student federal credit unions and it is very much so a big part of their leadership on campus is that they are involved in their SFCUs, but it's also a job for them. They work at the SFCU. It is okay to blur the lines a little bit between the work experience section and your leadership and activities section. We recommend that you make a judgment call depending on where you think the opportunity that you are writing about fits best. If you are applying for a financial services position, for example, and you believe your experience at the Student Federal Credit Union fits best in work experience rather than extracurriculars, please feel free to include it in work experience. Uh, the call is certainly yours to make. None of this is hard and fast when it comes to what section things belong in. Go with what you feel will fit your story and your narrative best. which is a great segue into leadership and activities. So leadership and activities is another way of saying uh, extracurriculars that you might have in your time on campus. And these can be things that might not necessarily uh, be directly related to the position you're applying to. So if you are interested in a career in consulting, please do not feel that your leadership and activities section needs to only include that you are a member of uh, California University's Consulting Club. Uh, this is a chance for you to highlight other passions that you may have and how you spend your time at university. Uh, so include clubs, professional organizations, and community service uh, opportunities where you've had a significant impact or where you've played a role. Uh, similarly to how you might show your positions, you wanna be sure to include the name of your club or group, if you hold a position, the position you hold, and your dates of service or the amount of time that you've been involved with the organization. Please feel free to include college varsity athletics here, performing arts organizations, uh, anything, student government, anything uh, that might kind of help heighten what your story is on the page and that's important to you. Uh, Again, in keeping with this theme about high school experiences that we'll touch on quite a bit, uh, our recommendation is that first year students may certainly blend their high school experiences into this. Similarly, if you had a really big national position uh, for a big organization while you were in high school, uh, feel free to include that in this section as well if you believe that the experience is relevant and a key part of your story. Uh, one thing that I will say here, just to touch on the relevancy point, uh, I, when I was applying for positions in management consulting, I did not have much experience in uh, any business related clubs or leadership or activities on campus. All of my leadership and activities were in performing arts. And it actually ended up becoming a really great conversation point in my interviews uh, where people would ask me about how my experience as a member of the Glee Club uh, could be best translated into why I was interested in a career in management consulting. It makes for some really interesting conversations. So feel free to really highlight things that you're passionate about. And then we get to our little catch-all at the end, which is other resume content you might include. And here we've labeled it as skills and awards in our illustration at the top. This section is an optional section that you can have on your page. Most people do have something along the lines of this at the bottom of their resume. And this section is designed to highlight special awards or areas of interest that you may have. This is a great place to include languages that you might speak, 
or technical skills that you might have, such as programming uh, or things that you would like to highlight that kind of don't fit really well uh, elsewhere in your resume. However, a few pieces of caution, if you please, uh, as we said before, similar to the objective and summary page, uh, including references, so actual names and phone numbers at the bottom of your resumes is no longer best practice and is certainly not necessary. When it gets to that point in the recruiting process, uh, firms will ask you for the right information, but no need to include it since you have such limited real estate on the page. Also, we recommend that for super common skills, so knowing Microsoft Word or PowerPoint or Excel, excluding very special skills in Excel, like knowing how to code VBA, there's no need to include those on in your special skills section. Most of these positions uh, that folks will be interviewing for coming out of the conference and for careers in business will expect kind of that baseline understanding of those types of technologies in order to hit the ground running here. Uh, but do use this as a chance to highlight a skill in programming or a specific technical background that you might have or an interest. You'll see here that in our example, this person is uh, interested in soccer and fashion modeling and cardistry. Uh, by all means, please include that. It's similar to the performing arts story that I was telling before. It's a great way to start conversation with your interviewer, especially if they happen to have an interest in common, which happens more often than you think. So, that's the resume content section, which just goes over the different sections that we might have on your resumes uh, and kind of the order that things go in and what to expect in each place. Now, before we get into the actual writing of the resumes, and this is the true kind of art and nitty gritty of really capturing what your experiences were all about and getting to that impact, that last word that I was talking about, uh, Sabrina, Alex, anything to add on the content piece that you think we need to highlight? No, I think I covered it really, Jake. Yep, I think you covered it. I just would like to echo kind of the interest part of your resumes. Jake makes a good point that it is a conversation starter and a nice way to kind of break out of just the general conversation during an interview with your interviewer. Um, I personally have like wine on mine and talking about wine is something that I'm very knowledgeable about and a lot of people also like to talk about wine. So it just gives you a little break um, and is a nice to have. So I always encourage having interest on your resume. I highly agree, and I also have wine listed as an interest on my resume, so if you are interested about wine, please let us know. Anyway, moving into the, uh, the nitty gritty piece of this. So this section is on resume writing. And before we begin here, I just want to clarify for the millionth time during this presentation that these are all suggestions on our part based on best practice examples that we have seen. Uh, resume writing is an art, not a science. So please feel free to take and maneuver this around the best way to share your narrative. But this is what we believe to be the best way to showcase you. And that's what this is all about. So beginning again with format. And this format point is a little bit different from our prior format point that we reviewed earlier. And this is about actually what goes under each of those positions and experiences that you write about. So we highly, highly recommend that you use bullet points uh, under each of your positions to talk about what you've done, but you wanna keep the bullet points succinct and clear. So try to keep to a max of two lines per bullet. Uh, one of the most important things is that you wanna maintain consistent formatting throughout your entire resume. So if you are bolding in company names, make sure you bold company names throughout. If you're bolding city names, bold throughout. Uh, there are a few different tips and tricks that you can do to make sure that your formatting is as clear as possible, your margins are aligned. Some folks like to use uh, a table, the table functionality in Microsoft Word. Uh, there is an example on YouTube that we will share uh, once we send out this presentation to all of you, uh, which is one way that you can go about formatting. But in general, the rule here is consistency. Uh, consistency will help bring 
clarity, which is one of those three key words that I want you to remember. Once you have your format locked down, style is a really big and important part of telling your own story. So again, be clear and concise. Clarity is king. Uh, you wanna use simple language that is easy to read and understand, which means you want to make sure that you are avoiding industry jargon and repetition in what you're writing. We'll deep dive a little bit into this uh, once we get to the work experiences section, uh, but please don't feel like you have to go ahead and have a field day with a thesaurus uh, on your resume. You wanna be clear and you wanna tell the story so that your resume reader can understand quickly and easily what your narrative is, what you've done in the past and what your impact was. In order to tell that story, make sure that you are beginning your sentences with action verbs, things like completed, analyzed, wrote, designed, presented. These words help color a story for whoever is reading your resume rather than just giving a job description. And this will allow you to really focus on that last key, key term, the impact piece of it. Using action words will force you into talking about the impact you delivered and specifically what you have done, rather than just saying these were the expectations of the job. One thing that we'll talk about as well is making sure that your grammar is consistent throughout. Uh, verb tense is really important and it's something that our uh, sponsors and employers are going to be checking for. So if you're talking about a current job that you have, feel free to use present tense. And if you're talking about a past experience, we recommend that you use past tense. If you're updating your resume, please make sure that the tenses that you use to describe your experiences reflect the time period in which you held the job. So a few specific tips on drafting. Uh, again, impact, impact, impact. Do not simply state your responsibilities on the page. If employers wanted to see job descriptions for a specific post that you held in the past, they would simply Google a job description for that post. What is much more meaningful for employers is for you to tell your own story of how you achieve success in a past position and why that experience is relevant for the job you're applying for now. One of the best ways to do that is to quantify your impact wherever possible. So saying things like the work that you did led to an X percent increase in growth, or you had to handle 100,000 customer records to uh, analyze, to reach a recommendation for your client. For example, using big numbers or numbers doesn't matter if they're big, helps to paint the picture for potential employers of the impact that you had. Make sure that you include skills that are specifically valued in your industry. So if you are uh, interested in careers in financial services and you think that financial modeling is going to be a significant part of the position you are applying for and you happen to have experience in it, feel free to talk about financial models that you've built in the past in your uh, descriptions as you are drafting, but make sure that you make it understandable. So industry jargon uh, is kind of one of these big road bumps that people hit as they're drafting their resume, uh, because some folks feel that they need to prove that they know about the industry by including uh, buzzwords that are used frequently. Please do not feel that you have to do that. More often than not, it is detrimental to your story. Keep it simple, keep it clear, keep it relevant, and show your impact. And lastly, and this goes without saying, but please always tell the truth. Uh, employers are going to sometimes verify claims when they speak to your references, but more than that, your resume is a reflection on who you are as a person, on your ethics, on your values. Uh, and also, it's what you're gonna be talking about in your interview. And you wanna be sure that you can talk to everything that's on the page and really share some of the background of the stories, make things come to life in that interview room. So be honest and be transparent. Before we move on from this page, uh, 
I want to take a moment and look at the uh, example illustration that you see at the top. So we talked a little bit about Fairbanks Consulting LLC a few slides back, uh, and now we filled it in with some of the some of the uh, explanations and impact statements that our candidate has drafted for the position. However, these aren't all the most perfect impact statements and there's actually a bit of improvement that can be done here. And this is the type of thing that we highly recommend that you do following this session uh, with your resumes to follow that test. Is it clear? Is it relevant? Is it impactful? So, Looking at that top bullet point, conducted data transformation analysis and execution of pricing and profitability improvement project for a Fortune 500 automotive company and found opportunities to increase net income by four to five percent with a project team of eight. So a lot going on there and there are some really good things. For example, that quantification at the end uh, found opportunities to increase net income by four to five percent is fantastic. That's exactly the type of quantification that's great to see. It highlights impact. But the sentence itself isn't clear. And part of it has to do with the fact that the grammar isn't helping it along. It's not a parallel sentence. And by that, we mean, if you read the beginning, conducted data transformation analysis and execution of pricing and profitability improvement project. There's a lot of verbs going on there, and it's hard to see exactly what the candidate did. So one way that you might fix up the grammar in the sentence to make it a little bit more clear would be just to change it to conducted data transformation and analysis to execute pricing and profitability improvement project for a Fortune 500 automotive company. Semicolon, found opportunities to increase net income by four to 5%. That very simple change there clarified the sentence a bit and made it feel a little bit less like a run on. So little things like that help along, help go a long way when it comes to telling your story. Now the second bullet, uh, I'm not even going to read it all out loud, but you'll see the word analysis is written like fifth, five, six times on that one, those two lines alone. And the point here is that there's a lot of jargon on this page. And at the end of the day, a lot of those things, product velocity analysis, consumer velocity analysis, price band analysis, it's all analysis. It's all telling me that the candidate has done something that has clearly helped to determine pricing improvement opportunities, but I'm not really sure what the candidate did. So rather than using up your real estate to use jargony phrases like that, it would be more helpful to talk about exactly what the analysis you did was and what you are driving towards, which is why it might even be best replaced by the third bullet on the page and just getting rid of the second one altogether. So on the last bullet, you see compiled 5 million transactions in Microsoft Access and use SQL to apply attributes, calculations, allocations, and adjustments into 122 fields to get data ready for analysis. This is not a perfect bullet point, but what it does is it very clearly quantifies what was done, the data that was analyzed, and what the applicant did with the data they had at hand rather than using big jargon. The one thing that could make this better is to explain what the analysis was used for. So rather than just saying to get data ready for analysis, if the resume had been written to say, to make recommendation on opportunities to improve profitability, for example, that combines the second and third bullet point, the story itself is clearer. So the reason I go over this, and you don't have to remember each and every one of these things, none of you work at Fairbanks Consulting LLC, uh, but the point is that there's always an opportunity to make your resume a little bit clearer and a little bit more impactful in your delivery. Focus on numbers, focus on your task at hand, and focus on the so what. What was the second order implication of the work that you were doing, and why did it help the company along? What you really want the employer to see is you made a difference at X company, and now you can bring that 
skill set that you have acquired to their company to help them solve the problems that they work on too. One potential framework that you can use when thinking through drafting, and this is a very common one that's used in resume writing, is called the STAR technique. And it's one that we really like at O4UB uh, and highly recommend that you think through if you find it helpful. Now, STAR is an acronym, we love an acronym. And STAR stands for Situation, Task, Action, and Results. At the end of writing your resume, we recommend that you review each of your resume bullets and you make sure that any reader who picks up this page is able to derive the situation in which you are operating, the task at hand that you addressed, the action that you took and the skills required to take that action and what the end result was. By focusing on the STAR technique, you are actually getting to articulating impact, which again, one of our three key buzzwords of the day. So start with explaining situation at hand. What was the task caused by the situation you inherited? What was the action taken based on the task you were assigned? And what was the result of that action? So just remember, the STAR technique will get you to impact. Now, you don't have to follow this technique, but we believe it's a super helpful framework. And it's great for a gut check at the end of your resume writing or just for a quick review at the end to say, hey, if a reader picks this up, will they know exactly what I did and the impact that I made? All right. So before we get to finishing tips, actually, I'm going to land us on the STAR technique page for a moment. And one more time, Alex and Sabrina, any key tips that you have from your experience in resume writing that you want to highlight here, things that you think would be helpful as students go ahead and uh, prepare for their final round submissions? Um, I would say that more so than you just looking over it, have a friend or a mentor or a professor read over the resume that you've written to make sure that it's really coherent. Um, I think when we're writing resumes, we oftentimes get so lost in what we're trying to say that we might miss over certain formatting issues, if something doesn't make sense, like one of the sentences that Jay corrected earlier. So having a fresh pair of eyes on it will really help you. And I can't stress enough kind of this star methodology for writing these resumes. Um, as someone who reviews for Accenture, I really am looking for impact and what you actually did. You never want your resume reviewer to be questioning what you did um, for that piece of work experience because that kind of uh, negates the entire point of writing a resume. Thanks, Alex. So one thing I would add to that is um, having your set it follows the STAR technique fairly well is also helpful when it comes to your actual interviews, since it's similar to the approach that many interviewers will take when asking you questions. I want to have a really good understanding of um, what you did at each role and how you had an impact. That's a great point. Thank you for that, both. So touching on both of those points, a few finishing tips. Uh, to Alex's point that he just made, review, review, review. Proofreading is remarkably important when you are submitting a resume to an employer, uh, to us at O4U to share with potential employers. Uh, and it's kind of the, the one thing that really makes it crisp and clear for uh, potential folks who you might be working for that you went the extra mile to really make sure that you were delivering a really professional piece of work. And that means double checking for not only the content and doing that read through for what's written on the page, but also your spelling, your grammar, your grammar, and the consistency of your formatting. Uh, in order to do that, we really, really recommend that you take a moment and actually print out a hard copy 
of both the Word document form and the PDF version of it so that you can see if there's any formatting changes. You can review with a red pen and feel like one of your teachers when you're in elementary school. Uh, but it's a really helpful technique to check for errors. And I think Alex's recommendation is fantastic. Uh, share it with a professor, your career services center at your campus or a friend and have them read through it too. Always good to get an extra set of eyes on the page to make sure that you are as crisp and as clear and as correct as possible. Uh, feel free to leverage parents and your friends as well. Now submission, uh, these are a few just uh, common sense things to keep in mind here. Uh, Make sure to name your file intelligently. Be smart about what you're calling your file. So in the most recent submission that we've asked everybody to deliver, we recommended, actually we required you to submit last name, comma, first name, underscore resume. Uh, but by all means, feel free to, when you're submitting resumes to employer portals, uh, just have a smart title on the document. So. Here we give the example of Dojane resume, June 2017. That's great. Don't have something like resume, resume V3 or resume V consulting. Uh, you want it to be fairly generic, but also descriptive of who you are as a person so that folks can quickly file things away in their own systems. Always use a PDF for electronic submissions. That's very much so the gold standard when it comes to submitting your resume. Uh, so do make sure that you convert your Word document when you are completed with writing and your checks on grammar and spelling. Um, and before you submit your PDF, if you are submitting electronically, make sure to check your converted PDF for formatting errors. Sometimes when you save as a PDF or print as a PDF, uh, things can get cut off and it gets a little messy. So just be careful. So next steps, what comes now? Uh, it is time for a final resume submission before the conference. You've all received the update uh, from us recently about your coffee chat preference forms, your final resume submission, and a quick note on travel. The invitation to this webinar was also included there. Uh, so we will be collecting final resumes must be submitted by Sunday, August 12th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. These will be submitted alongside your coffee chat preferences at the link shared in our most recent update. We will again recirculate that when we share the materials from tonight. And that link is also in the reminder email we sent out before the webinar. Before you submit though, make sure to review your resume. So follow the guides that we shared here today and make improvements to your resume as you see fit. Make sure to proofread for spelling and grammar. And as this is your most recent resume submission and the final one before the conference, include your experience from this past summer. This is the final version of your resume that will be shared with sponsors. All right, so we've reached the Q&A portion of our evening and we will quickly come over to the live chat version and answer some of the questions. So we will all, uh, all three of us will be answering bits and pieces and we might all kind of pop in at various times. But we'll begin with the first question, which is when you organize a resume in reverse chronological order, if one involvement starts before another but ends later than it, which do you list first? So this is a great question. Uh, typically when I have done mine, I do it by the end date. So whatever job I currently have, so present, so you know, June 2015 to present, I always have the top and then things go in reverse chronological order by their end date after that. Sabrina, Alex, do you do this differently or do you follow the same rule? I follow the same rule as you. Same on my end too. Great. So the eyes have it, that would be chronologically by end date, starting with present at the top. The next question is, I'm a transfer student. Do I include that in the education section given how restrictive firms are when it comes to sponsorships? So this is a really great question that comes up quite a bit throughout the conference. I think you can absolutely include uh, you know, your past past education in your section, be open and honest with firms about 
uh, the experiences that you have, especially if you are an international student uh, who is coming in and looking to be sponsored for a career here in the US. Uh, some firms do offer sponsorships, some firms don't. It's very firm specific, but in general, and I share this from friends' experiences that I have seen handle the, the question of sponsorship, uh, it's best to be upfront and learn what firms' policies are from the get-go, uh, rather than getting to the end of a process and hitting uh, an issue at the end. So by all means, if you are a transfer student or if you're an international student, please feel free to share your experiences on your resume. There's no need to hide who you are. And at the end of the day, I think it will save you a lot of trouble when it comes to the sponsorship point rather than hinder you. The next question here is when writing job descriptions, how specific should it be? Negotiated prices versus negotiated lower prices of 60%. It's a great question. Uh, so in general, we will always say that quantifying and sharing numbers uh, is a good thing. Uh, it helps to really color the story for resume readers and interviewers and share what your impact is. So negotiating prices is great, but if you can say that you managed to negotiate prices down by 60%, that's even better because it shows how much work you put in to get those prices down. My recommendation would be to share the number if you can. If you were working on a confidential project and it you know, doesn't feel appropriate to share quantified numbers. And this, this happens a lot with me. I work in management consulting where often I can't share numbers, then certainly don't breach any confidentiality here. But uh, in general, quantification of impact is always the best route. We have another question, which is, what's your opinion of seeing an interests section at the bottom of a resume? So. Alex, you had a, a great response to this earlier. I know you have a stance on this. Do you want to answer this one? Sure. I think having an intersection at the bottom of your resume is incredibly helpful, um, especially when it comes to interviews. You know, your interviewer will be able to connect with you on a different level than just kind of the, the, the nuances of the role and kind of your past experiences. So it's a great way to connect with people and push the conversation a little bit further. As Jake mentioned earlier, you might have something in common with them and it happens more often than you might think. Thanks, Alex. Highly recommend as well. Any other questions, folks, in the live chat? I'll give people a few few moments to type in if you do have questions. Uh, and I'll share a question that was shared uh, last year during this session that I think is a, a good one. So somebody asked, what's the best way to be out in your resume? If you want to highlight uh, that you are a member of the LGBTQIA plus community, uh, there are a few ways that you can do this. Uh, one, and it's kind of the easiest way, uh, to share it is if you happen to be involved in an on-campus organization uh, that is a Pride Alliance or a uh, out for business type organization, you can certainly include that in your leadership and activities section. Uh, and it's a great way to highlight your involvement in the community. Two is in that interest section uh, to share something like interest in uh, LGBTQIA plus activism, if that's a passion of yours, or if you've done community service with the LGBTQIA plus community, by all means, share that on the page. The other thing is that uh, you are all now proud participants of the Out for Undergrad conference this year, and participation in conferences like ours or Pride Summits hosted by some of our sponsors is a great way to highlight uh, not only past experience, but also involvement with the LGBT community. So uh, if you want to include a section on conferences, it's a great thing to have in the other section at the bottom, uh, along with interests, awards, skills, that type of thing. Uh, the other thing I'll say is you don't have to do any of those things. So it is very much so up to you uh, how you want to display your authentic self on your resume in your interviews and for you to share how you want to uh, with potential employers. Uh, 
you know, point of our entire conference is to provide a link uh, through our LGBT uh, QIA plus identities with employers who are interested in having parts of our community be part of their firms as well. So be as comfortable, uh, do what makes you feel comfortable, feel comfortable to share things if you feel so. And yeah, that's that would be my recommendation there. We have another question in, which is, is it acceptable to highlight the more relevant part of your experience for the summer, even if you probably only did it less than half of your summer? It's a great question. Uh, my recommendation here would be, if you had a super relevant part of your summer, certainly include that in your uh, description. Uh, but I wouldn't ex include it at the expense of or excluding uh, the other thing that made up the big part of your summer job. What's more important is that you shared it at all on the page rather than uh, not sharing it. So I would say to you, include all of the experiences that you had, but make sure that you write about the relevant experiences in such a way that highlights that you learned a skill and the impact that you delivered. All right, folks, we are at the hour, and I think we've had a really fantastic conversation tonight. Uh, I know some of you might have additional questions, so by all means, feel free to reach out to us. You know where to find us. We send you emails all the time. Uh, but we hope that you enjoyed the session. Please remember that your final resumes are due to be submitted on Sunday, August 12th by 1159 p.m. Eastern time. If you have any questions on that submission, please reach out to us. We are always happy to help. Make sure that you submit uh, your resume alongside your coffee chat preferences. And more importantly than anything else, we are very excited to have you joining us this year and really looking forward to the conference in just a few weeks. We hope everyone has a great evening and happy Monday night, folks.